This is 11.3 part 2. Another example. An airplane that's following a bearing of 239 degrees. Okay, so let me kind of draw this out. Um, so this is due north. It's supposed to be straight. Um, bearing of 239 degrees. Oh, wait. Um, I actually want to draw it over here. Just, just change my mind because I was reading the problem. And uh, I think I'm going to need it over here because 239 degrees. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and draw in uh, the east west line and the south line just so we can use those for reference. All right, so. We have a bearing of 239 degrees, so that's 90, 180, 270 would be too far, so 180 plus what is 239? 59 degrees, so that's about right there. Let's say there's our 239 degree angle. From due north, clockwise from due north. Okay. And it's flying an airspeed of 425 miles per hour. It's pretty big for the speed, so I'll make that kind of long. And that's 425 miles per hour. Encounters a wind blowing at 36 miles per hour from a direction of 115 degrees. Oh, and I probably should have written in what I said here. How much further do we have to go? That was 59 degrees. Probably should have written that down right when I talked about it. Um, but that, that number will be helpful, I think, in a minute. So... We have a wind blowing at 36 miles per hour from a speed, 36 miles per hour from a direction of 115 degrees. So I'm going to draw that in here. So I'm going to use this for my north line and. 115 degrees is going to be that, that much is 90 plus another 25 degrees gets me to right there there's 115 degrees in total and that little bitty part right there is 25 degrees it says it's blowing from 115 degrees. Okay, so what that actually means is that um, it's, I just wrote those arrows in and that's the wrong direction. Um, it's blowing from 115. So the vector is actually going towards the intersection of the north-south lines that are in green. And that vector is not in a good position because that means that the terminal points are at the same place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that wind vector over here so that its tail is at the terminal point of the um, bearing, uh, the speed and bearing that it's trying to go. Um, and I'm going to have it go from there to there uh, so that it, it's the green initial point is at the pink's terminal point. And so we're going to use that vector there. And that one has a magnitude of 36.0 miles per hour. Okay, so this this little um, green one I have over here, 
that's not the one I really want to use. I'm going to make it look sort of dotted. Uh, that's what it would have been, but I moved it to a different location, which is something you can do with vectors, no problem. Okay, find the resulting bearing and ground speed. So let me draw in that vector. It's going to start here and terminate there. And uh, let's see, what do I want to call that? Let's call that vector x, just because we can. Okay, now I need to do a, a, a little bit of erasing, erasing here, so bear with me. This original one that I drew wasn't very good, so I'm just going to get rid of it. And Go back to my regular pen. All right, so um, what we need is to find the angles um, that will make us figure out this problem. And so one of the angles I want to find is this angle right here because it's opposite. The, um, the side uh, x bar, uh, that vector, it's opposite that. So I'm going to want to find that. So let's see if we can figure that out. Um, see, this angle over here is 59 degrees, and I marked it. And that little angle right there is 25 degrees that I marked in green. So let's see, what can we figure out with that? Uh, let me think about this. Let's see. Um, because um, the 115 degrees, actually having that extension of the wind vector in green is good because that angle from due north to that dotted one is 115 degrees. Which means, of course, that um, the angle over here is the supplement of that one. And so that one's going to be 180 minus 115 degrees, which is 65 degrees in purple. And then think. What I need is this angle right here, yellow. Oh, and the north lines are parallel, and the pink one is the transversal. That's 59 degrees. So this has to be 59 degrees. So that yellow one is 59 degrees. And sorry, this is really small, and it's getting rather complicated. So that means that that one that goes between the pink and the green uh, that angle is 100, I'm sorry, um, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, that angle, which I'll call alpha, is the 59 degrees that we just identified plus the 65 degrees that we calculated a second ago for the purple. Um, and so that angle is... 124 degrees. So now um, what we're going to have to find eventually 
is something we can't find quite yet. Um, what I'm thinking of is the, the direction angle um, for this, the, the bearing. Um, so we'll come back to that in a second. But what we can find now is the magnitude of vector x. And again, that's going to be found using the law of cosines. The magnitude of vector x squared is going to be one of the known sides, 425 squared, plus the other known side, 36.0 squared, minus 2 times 425 times 36.0 cosine of the angle across from vector x. And that's the 124 degree angle we found just a second ago. And so if you take the square root of both sides of that mess, oops, I didn't mean to write the square. Taking the square root of both sides of that, you should get about 446 miles per hour. Okay, now, um, my drawing has become extremely messy over there. Um, it's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to try to draw uh, another version of it over here and not draw as much stuff with it. Oh, it's too small. Hold on. I'll make this look bigger. Won't be the scale, but it'll, uh, well, it's not scale anyway. Okay. Um, and that's not a right angle. You can see over here that it's obtuse. So this is the 36. This is the 425. Um, this is now something that rounded to 446. And this angle here was 124 degrees. Now, what we're trying to get at is the direction angle for x. So it's going to be a great big old arc, just because I don't want to run into everything. I want that measure right there. Well, the pink starts at the same place and stops just shy of it. And that little bitty angle in there, which is this angle right here, if I could find that angle, uh, let me call it theta, I need to add theta to the 239 degrees to get this red arc that I've drawn. And to find that angle, uh, theta, we're going to use the law of sines. So we know that the sine of this angle that we don't know over the opposite side, 36, should equal the sine of 124 degrees. Again, use the, the full-blown version of that. Don't retype it, but have it stored in your calculator. Then multiply both sides by 36 to isolate sine of theta. And then use sine inverse to calculate the answer. That should be about um, about four degrees, and so the um, bearing is the two hundred thirty nine degrees, the pink one, plus the four we just found. And so the bearing is about 243 degrees at 446 miles per hour. All right, 
So that finishes that example. So the next one, I've got a nice little picture on this one, I believe. It says, find the force required to pull a wagon weighing 50 pounds up a ramp, inclined at 20 degrees to the horizontal, assume no friction. Okay. So here's your ramp. Uh, here's your wagon. Yeah, I know, I can't draw. Um, the wheels aren't even on the ramp. Man, I'm awful. Now well, yeah, it just looks goofy. Oh well. You have a good picture there. Um, this angle is 20 degrees to the horizontal. And uh, the thing weighs um, 30 pounds, 50 pounds, excuse me, 50 pounds. And weight is always a force that's pushing towards the center of the planet. So for, from our perspective, that's straight down. So that force goes, whoops, well, I should be able to draw a little bit straighter than that, should go straight down like this. That's that force vector, and it's 50 pounds in size, it's, its magnitude. Okay, then, um, so that's due to the force of gravity. Then um, there is another vector that is the force of the wagon pushing down on the ramp. And so um, it's going to be perpendicular to the ramp, that force I'm talking about. Um, and the force required to pull a wagon, we represent that here. We're going to pull the wagon with a force like this to make that happen. And I can move that vector anywhere I want. For example, I could move it right here, create a nice right triangle. And uh, so the magnitude of that force of the um, one I just drew, its magnitude in pounds is what we're trying to find. So let's see what we can figure out here. Um, since the ground is horizontal and uh, the force of gravity is vertical, that's a right angle. And if the angle of the ramp is 20 degrees, 90 minus 20 leaves 70 degrees because they're complementary. And um, the angle between the ramp and the force exerted by the wagon on the ramp, that's perpendicular. And so um, that implies that this angle that's right here has to be 180 minus 90 minus 70 degrees um, because that makes the line of the ramp. Those three angles have to add up to 180. And so that's also 20 degrees, just like the angle of the ramp to the ground is. So let's see. Do we know enough? Well, oh, it's a right triangle. Yeah, of course we know enough now. Because we have an angle, 20 degrees, we have the hypotenuse, and we're wanting to know the side opposite. So the thing that relates to all of those is the sine function. The sine of the angle is opposite. Um, I suppose I should give that a name. Uh, let's say this is vector u. So it, it'll be the magnitude of vector u that we're looking for divided by um, hypotenuse, which is 50. So multiplying both sides by 50, we get the magnitude of our vector is 50 sine of 20 degrees. And we put that in our calculator, and we get that that 
is about 17. And of course the units of that would be in pounds. So 17 pounds is the answer. Okay, that finishes this lesson. Um, that's the end of the videos for this lesson. So I will see you in class.